Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is video 2 of a series of videos on React hooks. We've learned a lot about simple state management. Also important is the concept of lifecycle methods. This is where use effect comes in. The use effect hook lets you perform side effects in functional components. Let's head on over to the React docs again. The link will be in the description. This time we'll click on the docs link and let's look for hooks again. And let's click on number four using the effect hook. I know what you're thinking, not another counter, but I promise this is the last one. I don't really think you can call yourself a React developer if you haven't built at least two counters and a half a dozen to-do apps. Instead of retyping this, let's copy and paste it into Code Sandbox. Let's make sure to copy it in the body of the function. We'll need to add useState to the import, if you're not familiar with use state, head on over to my video. The link will be in the description. Okay, let me fix the formatting up a little bit. Let's not forget to import use effect from the React library. Let's add a console log inside our use effect so that we can see exactly when it runs. Let's see how lifecycle methods used to look in comparison to use effect. For anyone who's worked in class-based components, I'm sure you've seen this before. Well, if you scroll through the page, there are some really good examples of how you would convert the class-based approach to the hooks way of doing things. Let's clean up some of these comments and let's remove everything except for the console log from useEffect. Let's also add another piece of state. We're gonna call this value message and the setter function set message. Let's add an input so that we can update our message value. For the input to work, you need to add a value prop and an event to update it. And let's pass our message state variable to our value. Next, we need to add an event listener that can fire whenever the input changes. This event is conveniently called onChange. Let's check out the W3Schools website to look at events in JavaScript. The link will be in the description. If you scroll down towards the bottom of the documentation, you'll see something familiar. OnChange and OnClick are two of the events we've been using in React. Let's head on over to the React documentation again and take a look at the events. All JavaScript events have corresponding synthetic events in React. The only thing that differs is the syntax. In React, the events are camel-cased, while in Vanilla.js, they're all lower-cased. Enough about that, let's get back to some coding. Let's add set message to our onChange handler. The onChange function gets an event object as a parameter. The value from the input is on target.value. Let's hit Command S so that the formatting kicks in. Let's modify our console log message to say, will log with every re-render. And you'll find out that this is true in a second. Let's copy and paste the use effect hook two more times and comment them out. Let's clear the console and try clicking the button. Use effect runs both times. Now let's type something into the input. So as you can see in this format, use effect runs every time the app re-renders. Now let's uncomment out our second one and modify it a little bit. You might be asking yourself, what if you want use effect to only run once when your component is mounted? For example, when you're making an API call. The way you would do this with use effect is really easy. You do this by adding an empty dependency array as your second parameter. You'll see why it's called a dependency array in a second. Let's refresh the app. Interacting with the button or the input no longer re-renders the app. Use effect only fired when our component mounted. As expected, now let's explore the use case where we want use effect to fire every time the button is pressed, but not when there's a change to the message input. Let's change up our console log one last time. Within our dependency array, let's add count. Let's refresh the app. Use effect only fires when the button is pressed. Modifying the input will do nothing. 
Let's try out message in our dependency array and see what happens. As expected, now it's the modification of message that fires use effect. Now that you know the basics of use effect, in the next video, we'll use both use state and use effect in a more realistic scenario. In addition to the React hooks we've already covered, we'll also be learning the basics of React Bootstrap. If you like this video, hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe to my channel.